Hey Pop Tropicans, it's Captain Crawfish. Today I'm going to help you play through Escape from Pelican Rock on Pop Tropica. This is a very unique and challenging island that asks you to break out of the toughest prison around. I'm going to show you how to do it step by step, so let's get started. Here I am in Bay City. I'll take a look around at some of the people enjoying this nice day. Nothing too much seems to be amiss at first, unless you count this person's inability to rollerblade. Uh, but upon walking over to the left, a cry of stop thief, and then a masked bandit runs by. Being the hero, I will of course chase after. I'll head to the right and find myself at the bottom of Phonograph Hill, and there goes the bandit up the hill. This is straightforward enough, I'm just going to follow the path all the way up to the top. Not too much of a challenge here this first time through, although this bouncy umbrella may throw you for a loop a little bit. Just keep heading right on up the path. And at the top there's no bandit, but there is this pile of money, so let's investigate that. And now a little scene will play out and I will let you watch that. So, in the coincidence to end all coincidences, I've just been locked up, having been framed for being the booted bandit who was looking for a treasure on the top of that hill. Here I am now in Pelican Rock Prison, being introduced to my cell. The way that the rest of this is going to play out is that I will have to do things in the same order every day, but what I will try to do within each of those things I'm allowed to do is how I'm going to try to break out of prison. So the first thing that happens is I get put in my jail cell, and at the end of every day, I'm going to end up right back here in the same place. So here I am, on the first night of my imprisonment, and there goes the guard, off to do her rounds. Uh, once the guard gets off screen, you'll see this little heads-up display come up. That shows the guard walking on her rounds. I can tell how far away she is by the footsteps. So when she's not around, I can try to do things to escape, but if she comes back, I'll get caught. Here's the grate. If I can find a way through it, I might be able to get through to the back. The only other thing I did there was pick up that metal cup, as you noticed. That'll come in handy later. And with nothing else to do, I'll click on the bed and then decide to go to sleep. That ends nighttime, and the next day we'll start. As I said, Every day unfolds in the same way. Every day starts in the exercise yard. Because this is my first day, I'm gonna introduce myself to all the characters and try to figure out who they are. So here's this kind of older inmate named Patches who has a pet bird that's forgotten how to fly. Statue of the Warden. To the right, here's another one, Marion, who is kind of the the knowledge broker of the prison. This is the person who knows what's going on and can get you information. So that'll come in handy later as well. This rather glamorous looking person here is flashy Florian Fosbury, who will become a rather important character later. For now, again, we're just getting, getting introduced to everybody. Appears we have some kind of shared history, which will come out later. Maybe don't want to bother this angry person over here. And the last inmate that we're going to meet in this scene here is named Van Nostrand. This person is a painter. Once again, we'll make friends with this person and be able to help each other out as the quest goes on, and hopefully this person will be able to help us with our escape plan. And once we've talked to everybody in the scene, the warden comes out to introduce herself to everybody. 
Um, this all plays out automatically. It happens as soon as you have finished talking to everybody. Once again, I, I'll probably just let you enjoy this. Shared history, it appears. There was kind of a criminal conspiracy that they all think I'm a part of now. So that might be something I have to resolve later. That being done, we go to the next place, which is the workshop. Once again, on my first day, this is all about learning what you can do in here. And then as the days progress, you'll be able to work around the system to try to escape. Here's Marion again. Uh, this time I learn a little something else, which is that I can purchase information about the other prisoners using the currency of Pelican Rock Prison, which is sticks of gum. So I'll be able to do work in this shop to make license plates, which I can exchange for sticks of gum, which I can then use to pay for favors from other inmates. I can get a drill bit from this nearsighted guard here. That's not so much of a use for me right now but I'll need it later, so it's important to learn how to do it here. And now I'll get started making license plates. So I'll show you how this works. You'll want to continue doing this throughout the quest because you're going to need a lot of gum to do lots of things later on, so you'd rather get the gum early so you have it when you need it, instead of having to come back here and do more work. It's pretty straightforward. At the top of the screen, you'll see the letters and numbers that you need for the license plate and then you're just going to want to tap on the letters and numbers below in order to make a license plate that matches. This first time you're just going to do three of them and then it will end. In the future you'll be able to do more. So I've made three. Again, I'll be able to make more later. And now if I go talk to this guard, I will get three sticks of gum in exchange for the three plates that I made. And a note to keep in mind as we go forward, talking to a guard in any of these scenes will allow you to move ahead to the next one. So there may be times that you want to skip an entire scene, just talk to a guard and you'll move on to the next one. Our first day in the mess hall, we get a spoon automatically from this guard. And again, just like I did in the yard, I'm going to go talk to everybody. Many of these characters I saw before, a couple of them are new. To the left are two characters who are twins, named Les and Sal. So that I can start to eat my food, I'll click on the plate in the middle of this table. It does not taste so good, but it does trigger a little bit more dialogue. These two are have something a little bit helpful to say, which is that you could chisel through the walls if you had something metal, as Patches says. So, with my three sticks of gum, I'll pay Patches, and Patches promises to make a distraction that'll allow me to get another spoon. a little sleight of hand here. The guard who gave me the spoon before comes over to investigate. The other guard takes over spoon duty. So as far as the other guard knows, I don't have a spoon. I'll go talk to her, and I'll get a second spoon. One character I haven't met yet is the chef. Lambe, who will not allow me to get into the kitchen, although there are things I'm definitely going to want to do back there. Flambe wants three eggs in order to make an omelet. I'll be able to find these omelets somewhere else, and that's what's going to allow me to get in the kitchen. Now I'm just about all done here, so I'll go back and talk to these guards. Now that guard knows they gave me a spoon. This guard doesn't know I have two, so when I talk to her, I'll give her back only one of the spoons and keep the other one in my inventory from now on. So that's day one in Pelican Rock Prison. Back in my cell for the night, off goes the guard. I'll wait until that little display shows up at the top and that means that the guard is out of sight. 
take a look at the grate back here and try to chip away with my spoon. Not quite though. It doesn't quite work. I need to sharpen it, which maybe I can do in the metal shop. But day two is where things will start to change and where I'll be able to start working on my escape plan. I'm still going to go through the scenes in the same order every day, but there's probably new things I can do. For example, talking to Patches here, Patches is feeding the birds. Throws the seeds on the ground, down comes the seagull. You probably noticed the seagull left a nest behind, so I'll jump up there, and I'll be able to grab the first of the three eggs I need out of this nest. And once Patches is done, and the bird flies away, I can also pick up some of the seeds that are remaining. With the seeds, I'll walk over to this patch of dirt and use the seeds from my inventory. That'll plant one sunflower seed. As I say, it'll get plenty of sunlight, but it needs some water. Why do I want this? Well, I'll talk to Van Nostrand here. Again, all of the dialogue is going to be different today. Van Nostrand says she's really, really tired of painting the city skyline. She would love to paint something else, like maybe a flower. Unfortunately, there's no flowers in prison, at least not yet. I can use my metal cup here and fill it up with the water that is dripping from the pipe above. I can take the water over to where I planted the seed and use it to water the plant. I can do this once per day. I can't overwater the plant, but every day that I water it now, it'll grow a little bit. And after a few days, it'll turn into an actual sunflower. For now, that's the most I can do. As I said as well, different conversations are going to start to happen now on day two. So I can buy prisoner files from Marion if I have enough gum, which obviously I'll need to go do. Florian exercises every day to keep her measurements exactly the same, which she's very, very proud of. Might want to remember that number. Don't worry, we'll have a way of reminding you. So back to work for the second day. Now I have that spoon that is not sharp enough to chisel through the wall in my cell. There's a metal grinder in the workshop. And if I could just find a way to use it, then I can probably sharpen my spoon. I will head over and start using the license plate machine. I need to make actually seven of them here. Five is as many as I can make without the machine overheating. Seven will actually make the machine overheat, which is what I want to do. So I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit to show you what happens when I do that. All right, so that is seven license plates made. And as you can see, the machine is now smoking and steaming and overheating. This is bad for the guard, but good for me. The guard will run over, her glasses will get all fogged up, and she won't be able to see for a few seconds. I have a good five to 10 seconds here to do what I wanna do. What I wanna do is run over to the metal grinder, open up my inventory, and use my spoon on the grinder. After I do that, I end up with this chisel-like sharpened spoon in my inventory, and with that I will be able to start chipping away at the vent at the back of my cell. Everything's taken care of in the metal shop, we're all good for today. And as a nice side benefit of having just made all of those plates, I still get seven new sticks of gum, which is good because I'm going to need a lot more than seven before this is all over with. skip ahead to my cell at night. By now you know the drill. Off goes the guard. I have a certain amount of time that I can use to try to get out of my cell. So automatically when I click on the vent, there's my chisel and I can start chipping away. You'll notice what happens is that as I make the noise, the indicator of where the guard is fades away. So I need to make sure that I'm constantly checking how far off the guard is and that I stop chiseling before the guard comes back. There's not really any huge penalties for getting caught, but you will lose some gum. So you want to make sure that you stop before the guard gets back. You can do a fair amount each time, but you won't be able to get through the whole thing in one night. That's as far as I'm willing to go for tonight. Now I'll hit the hay. Boink. 
Next day I'm going to do some of the same stuff. I'm going to collect a cup of water. And when I have it, I'm going to head over and water the plant again. Try to get it to turn into a real flower. See it grow a little bit when I do that. I still need two more eggs for the omelet, so I'll talk to Patches once again. This time a bird comes from a different nest, so I need to get to this nest this way. Collect the second of my three eggs. It's a good idea to try to make some more money, or more gum I should say. I'm gonna skip ahead in the video to nighttime to show you the rest of chiseling. Once again with the guard out of the way, here I go. I'm pretty confident that if I just go full steam ahead, I'll be able to get through there, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm through. I can now sneak through there into the corridors behind the cell. At this point, there's still not much I can actually do because I still can't be out of my cell for too long. Again, no penalty here, but until I can find a way to make the guard think I'm in the cell, there's not much more I can do. I probably don't need to tell you what I'm going to do today in the yard. I will once again get some water. Water the flower. And once again, get patches to feed the birds. There is a third bird with an egg in its nest. This one is going to come from the same direction as the previous one, although a little higher up. It's not too much harder to get to though. We'll just keep going up from there and grab our third of three eggs. We wanna take those to Flambe in the kitchen. I'm skipping the shop again, but just for the purposes of the video, but you're not gonna to wanna to do that when you play. You are gonna to wanna to make some more gum. So I bring my eggs to Flambe. Now I'm allowed to go back into the kitchen. The only thing Flambe trusts me to do is stir the mashed potatoes, which I will do. Um, there's another thing I'm gonna do too, which is stop at this bowl of uncooked pasta, grab that spiral pasta, we'll use that later. To stir the potatoes, I'm just gonna click on the pot and there, that animation plays. So I get the approval of the chef, which is nice, just feels good. But I wanna show you one other thing that happens here. If I turn on these fans and then stir the potatoes again, something pretty unusual is going to happen. The potatoes will get sucked up into the ventilation system and spat out somewhere else. They end up on the table in between those two inmates. I'm going to want them to come out somewhere else a little later, so put that one in your hat for later. Skipping ahead to the yard the next day, there's a couple more things I'll do. I've earned enough gum now that I can buy the prisoner files from Marion. I will do that right now. The prisoner files are interesting. They have important information about everybody who's in prison, including me. And I'll need some of this for later, so we'll take a quick look right now. Most of this is funny. Some of it tells you a little bit about why everybody is confusing you for the booted bandit. Once again, those numbers that we talked about earlier with Florian Fosbury are here in the prisoner files. So we have this from now on, and if we ever end up needing them, we know exactly where they are. And for the last time, I'll fill up my cup with water, and I'll take it over to water the flower. And there it is, a nice big sunflower. I can pick this by clicking on the stem. And now I'll take it over to Van Nostrand, who you remember was really looking to paint something other than a skyline. So I'll open it up from my inventory and give it to Van Nostrand. So this does double duty. I get an old painting from Van Nostrand. It's that tower that you might remember from the beginning of the island. And she also offers to help me with anything I need painted in the future, which I'm going to need a few things painted in the future. Once again, skipping ahead, I'm back in my cell at night. I'm going to stand here patiently until the guard is out of sight. 
and I'm going to slip through into the hallway behind. There's a little pile of plaster on the floor here. With my metal cup, I can fill it up, and now I have a bunch of dried plaster. This will come in handy in the mess hall. I'll use the plaster to pour into the mashed potatoes. Once I've done that, I'll stir the potatoes. And this time they don't come out so smooth and creamy. This time they sort of solidify into a giant oblong brick. Obviously the chef isn't too happy about this, but at least she leaves the giant potato brick on that stool. So click on it now quickly, really pretty impressively I think, chip away at it until it starts to resemble my own head. You don't have to do this right. All you need to do is click on it until enough of the chunks have fallen away. And you'll have that, a dummy head that looks a lot like you. It doesn't have your skin color or your hair, but close enough. So we'll take it to the yard. Remember, Van Nostrand offered to paint us anything we wanted. Give Van Nostrand the dummy head. And of course she can paint it to look exactly like me. Four or five sticks of gum. So again, if you haven't been going to the shop and earning gum every day, you're going to run out really quickly. Having given it to her, we have to wait until the next day to come back. So again, I've skipped ahead in time here just to get you along here quickly. Now I get a painted dummy head. It looks exactly like me. And as long as we're doing all this, let's also give Van Nostrand the unpainted, uncooked pasta. This is going to be seven sticks of gum. You see, it's kind of a, a runaway inflation here in the prison. And again, I have to go through one whole night and then come back and I'll be able to get it tomorrow. But there are a few things I can do at night as well outside of my cell now. So I'll take this painted dummy head, use it, and I'll put it in my bed. Now I can take as much time as I want out of my cell at night because the guard thinks I'm sound asleep. So I don't have to worry about the timer. I don't have to worry about any of that stuff. And now I can access some parts of the other scenes I haven't been able to get to before. If I go into the system above the mess hall, you'll see the air is flowing through the vents, and that's where the potatoes came out earlier, through the middle. I want to redirect this airflow so that it goes out of a different pipe. So all I need to do is turn these valves and watch the airflow. Now I'll keep turning them until I get the airflow going out of the pipe that is all the way on the right. So this is above table one. I need to keep going. I'll just keep turning the valves until I get the air flowing out above table three, which you may remember is where Florian sits every day. And I'll probably be able to use that to my advantage. The other room that you can explore above is the workshop. Now it's gonna be over to the left. And if you fall, it takes a little longer to get there, but that is Pop Tropica for you. Uh, exit out here, and now we're above the metal shop. Same kind of puzzle here. The air currently is floating, flowing down in the middle of the room. We want to change the airflow so that it's coming down directly onto where the guard stands. So just follow the steps as I do them here. You will not have the luxury that I have of editing out the parts that you do wrong, but that's why they gave me this software. Uh, anyway, we're gonna keep uh, keep turning these handles until we get to the point that it's now going down. So we're all set here. There's one more thing that I forgot to show you, and the good thing is I have the luxury of all this time because I have that dummy head in my cell. I'm going to just head right back into the mess hall, all the way on the right of the scene is this metal plate that goes into a pipe looks like it accesses the outside. So if I can drill through there, I can probably get to the roof. I know I can get a drill bit from the shop. I'm already having that corkscrew pasta painted silver. I still need an actual drill. I need an actual motor. And I'll be able to get one of those in the mess hall. First, I'm gonna get my silver piece of corkscrew pasta from Van Nostrand. And at the point that I do that, here comes the warden about to show that just in case you didn't think the warden was really mean, oh, she is. So 
So bad enough that Van Nostrand is in prison, but she's got to get her spirit crushed too. All the more reason why we've got to get out of here while we can. Now I need to get a drill bit. I know I can get my hands on a drill bit here in the shop, but I also know that I have to give it back when I'm done using it. So what I'm going to try to do is create a distraction using that airflow that we redirected earlier. I'm going to start the license plate machine. Again, I'm going to skip ahead to the end to the point at which I overload it. So that is seven license plates. This old rickety machine is quitting in protest right now. Uh, once again, same thing that happens is going to happen again. The guards are going to come over to check it out. There's nothing I can do about this right now. But something different will happen when the guard returns to their post this time. All of that steam and smoke from the machine is going to get sucked up into the ventilation system. When the guard comes back, she'll stand behind the desk as she always does, and down comes the steam. Now that she can't see anything, I'm going to hand her the painted pasta instead of the actual drill bit. Because she can't see, and apparently can't feel anything, she buys it, she puts up the pasta, and now I'm going to leave with the drill bit. And I get some gum out of it. This is really a banner day for me. Now I still need the motor for my drill. I can use Flambe's mixer, but that's if I can get her to part with it. And as it is her prized possession, she's not going to just hand it right over. She will take it into battle, so if I can get a food fight started, then I might just have a chance to get it away from her. You remember what happened before? We redirected the airflow, so when I stir the potatoes, they'll get sucked up and now get spat out on top of Florian, who does not take kindly to it. And this will start a massive food fight. Florian comes crawling back, no mixer in hand. Things are really flying over there. So I will try to go into the dining area now and find the mixer. It's on the floor under this table. I can go down and get it. Automatically adds the drill bit in there. So now I have, at long last, a handheld drill. We are automatically moved along this time because we're rapidly hurtling toward the end. And same deal here. I'm going to be able to put the dummy head in the bed and now I'll get to put that drill to good use. Remember, it's up and to the right was where we saw that metal plate before. It's above the mess hall corridor. Easy to get to, just run straight to the edge. And by clicking on the plate, I will automatically start the process of drilling through. I'm through, and look who's here. Les and Sal have also been tunneling out of their cells, which is good because they've thought of something I didn't think of, which is that I'm going to need a life raft and life jackets to get across the bay. And they're almost done. So I'm not getting out tonight, but I've got co-conspirators now. Tomorrow night we'll be able to go. Here we have a little story moment. So Big Tuna's out of solitary and is teamed up once again with Florian, this time to get revenge on me because they still think I'm the booted bandit. And once I get out, hopefully I can find a way to prove that I'm not. A uh, little fun with the birds attacking them and now I run away. At last we come to my final night in Pelican Rock Prison. Head back to that pipe where I can get out. Here come Les and Sal, they've done their part. So we're all going to head out of here together. Slight miscue there, there's now scalding steam between me and them. So we'll have to find a different way out. They'll go low, I'll go high. I head up to the rooftops. I need to 
escape along the rooftops without being spotted. There are searchlights, and I can hide behind some of these foreground objects that you see here, and that'll keep me from being spotted there. There are also guards walking past the windows. I need to make sure I'm not in front of the windows when the guard passes by. If I can avoid all of them... Oh, there's another guard. If I can avoid them, I can keep going. I'll push this crate to the right, and then use it to jump up, still avoiding that searchlight the whole time. You do need to duck here so that it doesn't catch you, but I'm otherwise safe right here. I'll head up and to the right, and there is a little further left to go. The rules are the same here. Hide behind these things, stay out of the light, watch out for the windows. It's going to be a little bit more challenging, though. So I'll wait and jump across the windows. Head over to the right, wait for the light to go back. I'll head off on my way. Now this is the last one. I can't move and here are the guards looking for me. Just as it seems like I'm about to be caught right before I can make my escape. It's Patch's bird. The bird remembered how to fly and causes a distraction just long enough for me to make it out to the bay. So I'm free now, and there go my character along with Les and Sal back to the mainland. But there's still the matter of clearing my name and proving that I'm not the booted bandit. I think I know how to do it. Here we are back on Phonograph Hill. Les and Sal are going to live life on the straight and narrow just as soon as they rob the bank one more time to get some money. So they're off. We'll never see them again. Here's the marshal who arrested me earlier. He suspects I'm going to come back here. He's right, of course, but I need to avoid him and the other cops as I make my way back up the hill. I'll take a different route this time, heading into this building and then going straight up inside until I get to the window right near the top. Just jump, climb, do everything I need to do. Uh, now running to the left along the telephone line. Maybe it's more accurately a telegraph line. Either way, what I want to do this time is stay off the main path. The main path is what I took the first time up. Anytime I do that now, I'll get caught. But if I jump all the way to the top, I now have a path up. Push this trash can to the left, Use it to jump on top of the statue, and if you miss, just try again. It's not like you're making a video for hundreds of thousands of people. Here I am on the side of the Colt Tower. There's a little bit of platforming challenge involved. It's not too hard, although you do run into this dead end right here if you're not careful. So run off to the right and then up around the edge. And here we are, arrived at the top of the tower, where we think something is going to be hidden. Now I have this old painting of the tower, and if I look at it, it appears that something is different. Do you see what it is? It's this space right here in the middle has been filled in with plaster. What have I used before to chisel away at things? I have used my sharpened spoon. It turns out there's a safe. There's also a booted bandit. So whatever's in this safe was something that the booted bandit, Florian, and the big tuna all thought was valuable. They hid it up here, and here comes the marshal. How do I prove that I'm not the booted bandit? Maybe if I can open the safe. Now, nobody knows the combination but Florian Fosbury. Well, what was that number that Florian kept chanting over and over? If you don't remember, you can look in the prisoner files again. I do remember. It's 26 34 30. So let's take a look inside that safe. And there is your priceless treasure. Wah, wah. However, that's enough to make the booted bandit angry enough to give up her true identity. Plus, you know, she's wearing boots. You'd think somebody would have noticed that. Either way, they finally have the real booted bandit. And my name has been cleared. Of course, now they know that Pelican Rock isn't as escape proof as they thought. Now, given how quickly you escape from prison, some of your friends from inside will be paroled. If it takes too long, 
you won't see any of them on Main Street, but if you get out quickly, you'll actually see some of them on Main Street. I'm not gonna do that now, but it's a nice Easter egg and a nice reason to replay Escape from Pelican Rock. And after all that, here is my Island Medallion. Escape from Pelican Rock is available on poptropica.com right now for members. It'll be available for everybody in a few weeks. Thanks a lot for watching this video, and as always, thank you. Thank you for playing Pop Tropica. <laughs>